what it said to me was, if you seek the presidency of the United States and don't win, the media calls you a loser. Well, I, coming from, as a poor farm boy from Ottawa, Kansas, I thought just running for president was winning. <laughs> George McGovern did not win the presidency in 1972, but I'll tell you this. Because he made that campaign and people in this room supported him, there are a lot fewer names on that black wall in Washington than there were in the White What is, in those days, security was prevention of the U.S. and the Soviet Union from exchanging nuclear missiles, and a priesthood developed around that. Uh, circular error probable, and throw weight, and a lot of recondite terms that you had to be in the, in the foreign policy inner circle to even understand or talk about. And it helped if your name was Kissinger or Brzezinski. A former colleague of mine, John Culver from Iowa, once whispered to me on a, in an Armed Services Committee hearing, he said, do you ever wonder why the people who care most about American national security speak with an accent? <laughs> we are an open country and we welcome all. But now security is different. Obviously, security has to do with not being attacked on our home soil. That's the terrorist threat, and I'll end on that. But it also includes security of income, security of livelihood, the ability of wage earners to feed their families. You can, have, you can have reasonable assurance that you're not going to be attacked by a terrorist, but if you've just lost your job, you're not feeling very secure. And let's say you have reasonable, you have reasonable job security and reasonable freedom from terrorism, but the major employer in your community has just picked up and left, and vast numbers of your neighbors have lost their jobs. You're probably, your community is not feeling very secure. Let's say your community is secure, you have a job, reasonable protection from security, but you just came back from the doctor's office. You have a child that's been poisoned by the air that child breathes or the water that child drinks. You're probably not feeling very secure. So security now has to be thought of much more broadly than it did in the 20th century. That's one of the effects of that revolution. Finally, on the issue of terrorism, there is a notion that there is a military solution to terrorism, and in a very finite way, that's true. There is a group, let's call that group Al-Qaeda, although I think it's beginning to be a lot bigger than Al-Qaeda. These are people who want to kill us, and probably are not going to be subject to any kind of reason. They must be dealt with with military or paramilitary methods. But the real question then becomes, what about the next circle, and the circle after that and beyond? Let's go to the second circle. Who supports them? This gets very complicated. We know a lot of support came from Saudi Arabia. Well, let's think about that 10 seconds. America has an energy policy today. It would be interesting to have a piece of paper write, go around the room and have everybody write it down. I'll tell you what I think it is. I can say it in one sentence. It is to continue to use, wastefully use, energy, 50% of which we import from abroad. And if that energy gets cut off, to sacrifice the lives of our sons and daughters for that wasteful use. That is America's energy policy, and it's shameful, and it is immoral. Cars, we pay people in the Persian Gulf for their oil. They send part of that money on for self-protection, and that money goes to organizations in that inner circle, we call, call Al-Qaeda, and they try to kill us. So, very simple, we're subsidizing our own self-destruction by our energy policy. Let's change that policy, and that's an important issue in this election. One of the very strong reasons I support John Kerry, and I hope you do too. There's a third circle, and that's the one we're not paying any attention to at all. Those are people without hope. 
Those are 12 year olds in refugee camps in the Palestinian territory and throughout the Middle East and other parts of the world. Uh, Robert Kaplan wrote a book sometime back that for a 12 year old in a refugee camp, barracks life, and I think today he would say terrorist training camp, is a step up. It's a profound thought. You get shelter, you get food, you get clothing, you get a purpose. Otherwise, you don't have that. That's the problem. I know the 19 terrorists were not, didn't come out of, uh, of, of refugee camps, but the next group will, and they're, and they're coming out there now. And finally, the rest of the world that distrusts us and resents us because of our lifestyle. In fact, 6% of us consume 25% of the energy and other raw materials on Earth and produce 25% of the trash. That's a source of resentment all around the world. I know many of you travel as I do. These are the issues. I know it's fashionable to say, and I've said it many times, including when I was running for president, this is the most important national election in recent years. But I think for all these reasons, the revolutionary world in which we live, the changing nature of security, the transformation of war and the changing nature of conflict, the new threats, but also the commission which I served on, the new opportunities that this new century offers is reason enough to elect John Kerry.